G'day ladies and gents and welcome to the Rundown Under with Mags. So today we're doing something a little bit different. I have a bit of an interview for you. Today we're speaking to Anthony, also known as Rain, the Community Manager and Media Relations Manager for Chet Cat Games. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Mags? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. So we've got a couple of questions to run through today. I'm not going to take too much of your valuable time as I know you are a busy man. So we'll get this underway straight away. So, I've already shown off Halliborn to my subs. We've gone through a bunch of videos already, and I'm hoping very many more will be coming in the future, but I'd like to actually hear it from you. How would you describe Halliborn to somebody who hasn't played it before? Uh, I would say probably starting off by using the word unique and using the word different, because we're doing something with the heritage combat, vehicle combat, wargaming, however you want to put it, genre, that it hasn't been done yet, and... Um, to describe Helleborn as um, anything other than unique right now, I, I don't know if that would do us quite the service, but I think we're best described as, how do I put this, a, a, a dedicated helicopter vehicle combat game that is trying to cater to the side of the community in aviation and rotary aviation and, and rotary combat that's never really had this level of, of support before. I mean, that's probably not very eloquent, but for me, I, I just really think that we're doing something different and unique uh, with the vehicle combat genre. We're focusing on helicopters and rotary aviation and we're doing it in a manner where we're trying to give you both quick uh, gameplay as well as long-term tactical and strategic gameplay and the biggest thing to me is we want you to feel like a helicopter pilot we want you to feel what it's really like to be flying the most advanced flying machine in my personal opinion um, that we've ever developed to be in that battlefield dropping off troops under fire lifting off, hovering, providing close air support for your guys, and just really getting that experience of being a combat helicopter pilot. And hopefully that kind of gets it off to people. And definitely, definitely. I actually haven't seen uh, really any company address uh, helicopter aviation since the mid-'90s. That was probably really the last area where it was big. So I think Unique's probably a really good description in there. So how long has Heliborn actually been in development at this time? Uh, you could say about two years or so. Um, I guess I want to use the term passively, and then uh, the last year very actively um, is about how long that we've we've been in development. So I'd say about three years in total so far. Mm -hmm. So Halliborn's just entered early access on Steam. How important is early access to the development cycle? Very. Uh, we don't want to develop this game without direct feedback from from the community and without being able to build the game alongside the community because we are a, a niche title in a niche market. I, um, and I use those words and I don't want to because we, we say niche, but there's still a market with, you know, four studios doing six titles, not including us, uh, with millions of people enjoying tanks and ships and planes and heritage vehicle combat in general. Uh, so for us to, to come out into early access and to say, here's what we want to do and no one else is doing this and we want to do this with you is, is very important. It's entirely the reason why we went into early access was to make sure that we could put the game in front of everybody and say, look, it's not done. We want you to help us make it and we want you to tell us what you like and what you don't like. And the good thing about that is we have the ability um, in our development cycle to literally put a system in the game one week and change it or completely replace it or remove it the next week based off of immediate feedback because early access gives us that you know we can see that all of the team is on steam and the forums and we have an official discord server you know and where we're talking and in the game playing all the time too because we really really care about your feedback so i guess to answer that question in a long-winded way it's very important to us, and hopefully, hopefully, that's getting across to to our to our fans and our customers that we care an awful lot about being on early access, treating early access right and correctly, and being right alongside our community, uh, making the game that they're gonna want to play. Hmm. So, how has the launch gone overall up to this point? I mean, it sounds like everything's fairly fluid 
at this point in the development. How's the feedback been? Uh, launch gone well. Uh, the launch has gone well. Excuse me. Um, I could say we're probably about to uh, closing in on the uh, eight thousand unit in the first week and a half mark, uh, which is which is pretty good for an early access title. It's really good, and uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback. Um, as I said earlier, we're on the Steam forums all day, every day, and uh, we're getting constant feedback on balance and flight models and helicopters and. Um, constant feedback on what people want to see in game modes and maps and, and everything else stuff I'm sure we'll talk about here in a little bit but uh, the feedback has been overwhelming actually it's it's really difficult to uh, to maintain that which is pretty much most of my job all day is is constantly talking to people and playing the game with them and, and uh, getting that that valuable feedback and I've been very surprised that the feedback hasn't been this sucks this is cool, and that's the end of it. <laughs> our community so far is, in, and I think this this speaks to the genre that we're in. Our community has been very, very, very clear and concise with their feedback. I don't like the flight model, and here's why, and here's what I think you should do about it. You know that that level of feedback is something I'm not really used to. You know, normally people are like, you know, hey, I don't like your game, and okay, that's fine. Thank you for the feedback. That's a completely valid thing. You don't like it. It's not for everybody, but. We get people, even in our negative reviews, telling us exactly why they didn't like it instead of, you know, your game sucks, which has been amazing. So useful feedback. That is definitely one of the important things, and it's, mm. it's nice to see. I know of a few developers I've spoken to that unfortunately have been getting the short answer rather than the detailed one, which isn't always helpful. How about no, the servers themselves? How, how has the activity been on the servers since the early access has gone through? Uh, compared to the alpha, it's been amazing. Um, we've, at least on on the the servers we've got at the moment, you can log in and pretty much guarantee to have twenty, thirty, forty people on twenty four seven. So I, I think we've we've spread out our community around the world uh, across the timelines, and uh, the servers are handling the load just fine. They're capable of handling a much higher load than they're doing right now. The servers are handling about twenty five. 20-25% of their maximum load capacity at the moment uh, is the most I've seen and that's when 60-70 people are on playing uh, and so servers are doing just fine. I mean obviously you know we have to worry about hit detection and, and lag compensation stuff like that but other than that the servers have been good too. Ah, excellent. Hopefully we'll get a few more people on there as well. I'd, I'd love to Hope see so. just constant packed out matches. I know the ones I've been playing so far have been fantastic. So I'd love to too. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, oh no, please continue. No, no, I'm just saying I'd love to, too. I'd, I'd love to, uh, to to see you guys overload the servers, crash them, let us know how, how much it takes to break them so that uh, we can prepare for that in the future. There you go, guys. You've just got permission to try and crash JetCat's servers. Get on it. Please. Get on it. <laughs> Let's stress test this. Yes. All right, so moving on from the early access launch, I've uh, been yes. keeping an eye on some of the posts you've been putting up about developments and things that have been going over time, so I'd like to go into some of those now. Uh, in a number of posts, I've seen mentions of a deck building mechanic that will be added, and it'll be linked to progression. Would you be able to talk a little bit about that deck building and how the planned progression tree is going to work for Halliborn? Well, um, at the basis, uh, basic, the the very uh, the bottom foundation of it all, you're going to have three tiers that span about 20 years each. Well, not about literally 20 years each. Um, starting uh, from 50 to 60 to, to 60 to 70 is the first tier, and I think 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 2000, 2000 to 2010 is the third tier. And you're going to see a little bit of a, a progression system that is you're going to start the game with helicopters in all three tiers so that you can play the 50s to 70s helicopters as well as the 70s to 90s and the 90s to 2010s helicopters right off the bat. You can play all three tiers of rotary aviation right off the bat and then progress through those three independent eras, as we're calling them, eras of rotary aviation. And that really kind of helps us with the progression system because rotary aviation really hasn't... It's kind of a lot like uh, firearms. You know, there's not been a lot of... Um, Technological development or development. chain yes technological development a helicopter is a helicopter is a helicopter barring tandem rotors and you know contra rotating coaxial rotors like everything built by Kalimov and and for those that don't know what a tandem rotor is the Chinook is a tandem rotor where you have the rotor up front and the rotor in the back and they're both 
rotating in opposite directions, which means they're contra rotating. Um, so outside of that and and other things like you know way back in in, in the '60s with the CH56 Cheyenne, for example, that that had the pusher prop on it, and you know modern rotary aviation, we the a 20 year time span won't see massive developments in helicopter aviation to the point that we would have to worry about the progression seeing a system being broken based off of performance. Um, as far as that is considered, you will be able to build a deck for each tier, and we're going to basically give helicopters a point value, and we're going to give you slots to begin with. This can change, so please, as, as we talked about earlier, give us the feedback. You don't like it, great. We'll, we'll try something else. If you love it, please let us know. Um, the first version of this system, you'll have three slots, and helicopters in each tier will have a point value. If you put a completely unarmed transport just carrying troops, it will be cheap. If you put a tricked out attack chopper with you know its maximum weapons load, not so cheap. Um, and what we're hoping to see is is slots good, or should we just let you say there's a thousand points? take the helos that you want to take into the match and when they're all done, you're out. Um, a lot of that stuff also relies on some systems and features that aren't in the game yet as well, but that's kind of what you can expect for the first version of this when it comes out. So the system doesn't actually sound a whole lot different to the one from uh, Wargame, Airland Battle and Red Dragon. It sounds very Not similar. really, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Well, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of inspiration there. A lot yeah. of inspiration there. Mm. And the, the way the errors are, just to make sure it's, uh, it's nice and clear, the way you're splitting your errors into three separate errors, starting helicopters in each and several one, just to compare through to another game that I know my subs are very familiar with, War Thunder, would be the equivalent of, say, having reserve aircraft, uh, the first level of jets, and the first level of, say, something in Error 3, all available at once from the moment you start yes. the game. Yes. Huh. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, because I, 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 I'm a gamer myself, and I, and I, I used to play War Thunder quite a lot. So you could basically imagine exactly that. You know, the, there's five tiers in War Thunder, and if you had reserve aircraft at one, three, five, and you could just jump into one, three, five, and then build up, you know, one, two, three, you know, one, two, three, four, and then five. Um, and obviously, if there was another tier on top of that, that's pretty much the same sort of experience you can you can hope for and it won't be grindy uh we're looking at about 40 to 60 hours for you to unlock absolutely everything oh excellent 40 to 60 hours worth of gameplay overall yeah oh excellent um yeah so at the moment we have three maps in three different eras within the game or two vietnam one in a modern conflict area how wide are you going to go with the conflicts and are there any plans for alternate history matchups um, excuse me. Uh, as far as alternate history is considered, we're not really discussing that uh, at all currently within the team. It's it's been discussed in the past, but right now we really want to focus on on things that are um, how do I put this um, true to the source and and true to the heritage. So. Um, the next map you can expect is either going to be Balkans or something like Kosovo, um, and we're probably going to be attempting to put out maps based on era and game mode because we want to give you a wide range of map sizes and map game modes for the eras. Uh, so what that means is probably another large map like um, when you, um, but in a different era of helicopters, and then like another small map for a different era and uh, that's how we're going to be moving forward with map development and um, hopefully people will enjoy it. And you speak about the game modes, have you had any other plans for an additional game mode? At the moment we have the, the ground forces base map and the King of the Hill, the two King of the Hill maps. Are there yes. any plans for thirds or any other kind of other modes, maybe a domination mode or anything along those lines? There's uh, plans for a third mode, which is an attacking team and a defending team, uh, but we're not quite ready to discuss that yet. It's it's there, it's being talked about, planned, and, and designed, but uh, uh, we we still want that sort of game mode to be the same level of, of tactical decision-making and dynamic battlefield and large-scale conflict that you get off of the win map and the uh, front lines 
uh, ground forces game mode that you've got now, but we want there to be an attacking team and a defending team, and we want you to be able to switch to that. So um, that's coming. I can't tell you when, and I can't tell you too much more about it at the moment. Sorry. Oh, no, that's perfectly fine. I look forward to hearing more about it when it's available. Actually, I look forward to playing it and covering it. That'll be great. Um, at this time, uh, this is another question that I've seen popped up on a lot of my videos, and it's regards to do with the, uh, the payment model for the game. At the moment, mm. it's buy to play. The early access is $10. Uh, are there any plans for free to play in the future, or is it going to stay a buy to play model? I know this can be up in the air, but w where are the current thoughts with JetCat on this? Uh, the current thoughts, as unanimously throughout the team, is a vehement no to free-to-play. Um, so you can expect that Hellborn, at least for the foreseeable future, um, un unfortunately if things change financially and we have to make decisions that allow us to stay alive, which, you know, I don't want to freak anybody out, you know, we're completely fine. But if we have to make those decisions in the future, then obviously we'll have to, to, to take a look at that. But... Um, for now, we are staying a premium title, $10. When we go live, uh, officially, a year from now or two, we will up the price. And uh, we're not really ready to talk about what that's going to be. I can give you um, a sort of a ballpark of between 20 and 30 when we decide to go live after another year or two worth of development. But I can't give you anything exacting. And that's U.S. dollars, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that sounds pretty normal. I've watched a lot of games come out of early access and go through, and a, a straight up ten to twenty jump seems quite reasonable, even up to thirty, providing the content's there. And at sixty hours, that's I've paid a lot more for games that have a lot less content than sixty hours in it. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Me too, and and I'm hoping we can pull it off. I I know we've we've gotten some feedback that speaks to um, our players not getting quite the amount of gameplay that we're hoping, but hopefully mm. we can pull it off. So on the other side, obviously, if you're going to be staying with the buy-to-play model, are uh, DLC or expansion packs, have any of those been discussed, or is it, again, too early to really get too deep into that? It's, it's been discussed. It's always discussed. Uh, but it's been discussed of how do we do this right? When do we do it? Um, how do we do it so that you you guys believe it's it's worth, worth the money? Um, and right now I can tell you that until we launch out of early access, DLC and expansion will not be a thing at all, period. Um, as long as we are an early access title, we will not, barring unforeseen circumstances or major, major financial disasters, which again are not happening, we are completely fine. But if people want the truth answer, the true answer here, this is what I'm giving you. Um, you can expect that while we are classed as an early access title, you will not see paid DLC or expansion packs. When we launch and we stop being an early access title, we'll talk about it then. Ah, excellent. That's a level of clarity you don't get to see very often. I'm actually quite happy to hear that, especially considering I've been looking at some recently that have full loads of DLC on games that aren't actually finished yet. That really annoys the crap out of me to be honest <laughs> well that's kind of why we're doing it that way and hopefully mm -hmm. everybody watching this kind of kind of likes that and and we want feedback on that if you guys want to see things uh, we have for example helicopters in the in that don't have a place in the tech tree mm -hmm. and 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 we've talked about premium helicopters but we don't know how to do that and because we want to put them in the game before we launch but they don't fit anywhere so you know, talk to us guys, and and if you're if you're willing to see something that maybe we don't want to do, but you really want it, then let's talk about it because that's why we're doing early access. Tell us what you want, what you don't want. There you go, guys. Jump onto the forums and have a chat with these guys. A chance to actually build a monetization system that works well, rather than one that feels like a giant Skinner box. <laughs> All right, so, Agreed. So let's talk helicopters now. Can yes. you do some uh, do a bit of describing on exactly how the flight models for Halliburton work in some detail? I used in the Steam Store description the the, the terminology of simulite, which um, forgive me everybody that's watching for using such a, a, a crappy PR buzzword there, but it's kind of my job. <laughs> uh, but uh, I didn't really know how else to describe it. Um, what I can tell you, for example, is every helicopter in the game in flight has 
roughly 70 to 80 completely different flame attributes. Uh, we're talking engine power and thrust. We're talking nose up and radiance second, nose down radiance second, yaw rates, roll rates, um, ascent and descent rates, all kinds of things. So it, it's actually, and, and, and let me preface this with the word um, relatively, because um, remember, you know, relativity, everything's relative. It's relatively easy for us to do a more realistic flight model because we're modeling so much in an arcade environment already that it's it's a little bit easier for us to take the flight model in a way in a, in a direction that is much more simulation but I need to sort of clarify that doing that would still take about six months if not a year so it's a little bit easier for us to do it that way than it is to kind of um, how do I put this go back because we're we're modeling so much that we're we're technically a simulation that's been nerfed into being arcade if I put it that way mm. um, probably gonna like get something for for saying it that way but you can you can imagine there's a a, a lot of stuff being um, looked at stats wise on these helicopters and that's not even talking about their health and the time to kill and weapons and loadouts and, and everything else like that. Uh, it, other Outside of that, um, I, I don't really know what else to, to really go into uh, without getting exorbitantly technical, but I can tell you that we're modeling quite a lot for all the helicopters. That's great, because you've actually just uh, completely destroyed my next question, which I was going to ask. How Sorry. Difficult it... <laughs> That's fine. I was just going to ask exactly how difficult it would be to shift these into a more realistic flight model away from arcade if you wanted to. And it sounds like, yeah, about six months' worth of work, but you're already gathering enough data points to be able to do that. So yeah, the... we can probably Sorry. flick over to the other side and go to the physics engine. The physics mm. engine for Halliborn at the moment, it's currently a Unity game. How flexible yes. is it and how accepting would it be if you were to go for a realistic approach with the flight models to modelling realistic effects for the helicopters themselves? Um, we can do all kinds of stuff already relatively easily. We can do um, crash states where we can put you in an auto-rotative state um, and or have you just uh, completely spin out of control with your tail rotor shot off or um, as you saw because you've been with the project for a while now that when we added the inertia system into the flight model and helicopters started being a little bit more floaty and, and sliding around in the air um, stuff like that is is again the word relatively uh, easy to do um, it only took a few weeks <laughs> so uh, unity is is and, and and despite the the common misconception that unity is a bad engine and that the thing to do is to bash on Unity. Um, for one, the guys at Unity are amazing and the mm. engine is amazing. Um, look at Kerbal Space Program if you want to talk about what can be done with physics in, in, in Unity. Yes, yeah, Subnautica uh, as well. And Subnautica, mm. yes. Those guys are also amazing. Mm. They're, they're doing a really, really great project there. I would suggest people go take a look at those, those games. Um, but as far as Unity being accepting of it, I mean, we can do whatever we want in Unity. Yeah. Whatever we want. It's just a matter of how we go about doing it and talking to the engine and interacting with the engine. So the, the, the big issue is how do we do it right? And to kind of go back, if you don't mind, um, to an earlier question that you had, um, the reason a lot of people haven't touched helicopters is because they're really hard to do. Mm -hmm. Because in, in a fixed-wing aircraft, you sit on the runway, you set everything up, and then thrust, lift over the wings, up you go, right? And as long as you don't screw it up and stall it out, the plane's going to fly. I mean, you go forward and plane flies. There's usually about four or five aerodynamic effects on an air, on a fixed-wing aircraft compared to 20-something or more on a, a, you know, a rotary-wing aircraft. So that's why it's no one's touched it and we've not gone more realistic because it's really difficult to do correctly yeah. but to answer the question sorry i've been i've been going on um unity is 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 amazing to work with and we can do whatever we want it's just a matter of time and development and resources yeah i'm actually an avid defender of unity uh unity is a fantastic engine that unfortunately has a lot of very bad developers but that's not the engine's problem no it isn't yeah and on, on the subject yeah you've just reminded me of uh of a joke that I heard ages ago in regards to aircraft and helicopters. You know, aircraft fly, helicopters beat the air into, into submission. 
That's correct. Yes. <laughs> All right, so on the subject of realism, and we're going to go a bit further, at the moment there is a generic in-cockpit co- in view for all helicopters. It's basically a HUD setup at the moment. Yes. Uh, what are the plans to actually model an internal cockpit and plans for track IR and possibly VR support in the future as well? Uh, in regards to cockpits, there's there's a couple different issues there. One is actually being able to get the source material for the aircraft, and that sometimes involves us actually physically going out to the aircraft and, and taking pictures of it. And in certain situations where we're flying, we're, we're, we have helicopters in the game that, whose cockpits we'd need to put in the game, and these helicopters are still active combat aircraft in both Russia and the U.S., there's no way in the world that uh, people are going to let us take a really hard look at an AH-64 Delta Longbow or a Kamenov K-52 Black Shark that's actively flying combat. So it's it's a matter of, you know, how how realistic can and, and obviously it's been done. I mean, you know, DCS has done really well with Black Shark. I don't know how, but <laughs> they've done really really well with it. And and but we don't want to get to that level of fidelity. Like we we don't want every button to work. That's that's not what we want to do. Uh, so hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for us to just develop a a base cockpit model for each aircraft, and uh, but it's a matter of licensing and and getting the source material and getting access to the aircraft and deciding what we want to do with cockpits, how much we want the instrumentation to work, and and things like that. A lot of that stuff is performance related. Uh, and in regards to track IR, yes, we want to do track IR when we have cockpits. Um, before then, we don't really think there's a reason for it. Um, if there is, and you guys think there is, tell us. Uh, but right now, we don't think track IR fits well with a third-person environment. Um, and as to VR, uh, hmm, uh, no, <laughs> not not any time in the near future is 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 the best way that I can that I can put it. I mean, it's it's an amazing technology. Uh, the early adopters are brave people, and. Uh, it's it's going to be an amazing thing, but um, considering you know pricing and resources and development costs and all that, VR just really isn't kind of something we're we're willing to take a look at at the moment because we just don't have the resources to do it. Yeah, I can honestly understand that a little bit. Uh, my wife hasn't found out exactly how much my uh, Oculus Rift headset is going to cost me yet. I'm not planning <laughs> on telling her if I can avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I would avoid it too. <laughs> All right, so we better bring this one up to a close. We've been going through for a while now. We'll bring it up to the last question. At currently, what is the development cycle or the development plan for Halliborn? Exactly how long are you planning on going through the early access until we get a full release? The original idea was a year, um, a year in early access. Uh, we've only been out for a week and a half, so you know another 50-some-odd weeks to go. But... Uh, we're going to see where we are in a year, and if we need to stay in early access, we're going to stay in early access. And if we're confident that we've, in a year, given you a complete experience that we can launch but still support, we'll do that. If not, then we'll stay in early access. So when it's ready is probably the easiest way to narrow it down. Yes, yeah, yeah, to, to paraphrase, yes, when it's ready. <laughs> yeah, I actually quite like that. It's uh, ready that you're running to a developer nowadays that will be that blunt about things well ladies and gentlemen this has been anthony also known as rain the community and media relations manager for jet cat games thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for the interview if thank you for having me if there's anything else you want to say to anyone before we sign off um just we can't thank you guys enough uh we got greenlit in seven days and our first almost two weeks has been great and just keep giving us the feedback, keep playing, keep telling us what you like, what you don't like, leave reviews, even if they're that red thumbs down. Just make sure that if you're going to leave us a red thumbs down, you're going to tell us why so that we can make a better product for you. That's what we care about is making a, making a game you guys feel that, you know, you want to purchase and making a game that you guys love. So, you know, make sure you keep giving us the feedback and, you know, just thanks. Thanks to everybody that supported us. It really means a lot. And thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Thank you very much for watching and listening in. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.